Hi, this is Kevin Rosofsky. I'm here at the Calipers Ownership Group meeting here, right here in Hopkinton. We've got about 350 customers here from around the world, primarily in all the sciences that are focused on discovering new drugs and new diagnostics. It's a pretty exciting show for us. It's more than twice the size of any other show we've ever had here in Hopkinton, so we're really excited about that progress. Um, as a company, we're also growing very rapidly, which is also good, and we have 45 different customers here that are presenting on all aspects of how medicine's being revolutionized. So we're really focusing on cancer and heart disease. We actually have about 10 to 15 pathologists and MDs here this year, first time ever, because our technologies are being used to really create new ways of treating these, these ailments. So really excited that uh, right here in Hopkinton, where the marathon starts, we've got this great uh, progress going on around um, cures for cancer and cures for heart disease, and everyone is very focused on it. So. Hi, I'm here with Denny Osorello, Dr. Osorello. He's the head of medicine at Mass General Hospital. He's also on the boards of Pfizer and the Broad Institute, and he's the chief scientific officer of Harvard Partners. And as medicine's being revolutionized, we've asked him to say a few remarks to our group. He's getting ready to do a keynote. So, Denny, I was wondering if you could make a few comments on how you think medicine's going to be revolutionized in the next 10 to 20 years. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. It's a pleasure to be here today. And uh, one of the main reasons I'm here today is that the important collaborations between the academy and industry are, are going to be driving uh, this revolution. Uh, we're in an era of uh, technology-driven medicine, uh, both at the level of the genome and at the level of understanding the simple aspects of disease, such as phenotype, of, of when patients have certain symptoms. And I think it's the kind of work that your company and other companies that are doing uh, that will enhance our ability to interrogate uh, the human uh, so that we have a better understanding of disease. Outstanding. Thanks a lot, Danny. We My appreciate pleasure. it. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here, and, and, and I'm here for, for two major reasons. Uh, uh, number one, I truly believe that we are at a threshold of opportunity uh, as well as serious barriers in making the academy and industrial relations robust, transparent, and important to the ultimate well-being uh, uh, of our patients and understanding the human organism in general. And secondly, because I'm inspired personally uh, by both the approach and the vision that Calver has in helping deliver on that. And that is, if you're going to move, if this kind of information data is going to move us into pre-symptomatic continuous care, it's actually going to lead to a lifelong, more intimate relationship between you and your doctor because you're starting at an earlier point. You're starting with your family as part of those recipients of the same genome that you have. And I think that's incredibly important. The kinds of partnerships for healthcare delivery that go forward are not going to be less intimate. They're going to need to be more intimate at a time when we also have to decrease cost and improve effectiveness and quality. So at the end of the day, the secret of patient care is the care for the patient. That's still our motive and our desires, and it's a pleasure to be here today. I get a chance to represent our 500 employees each year, and this is, for us, one of the most exciting moments because we get an opportunity to showcase to you what we're thinking about, the way we're thinking about our company, the way we use tools, and try to think through what should we do next to help you do what you do. And so the agenda we're going to walk through today is state of healthcare, triple crown focus being innovation, collaboration, and culture. We all remember cracking the code, genomics from the project industry in one decade, medical impact and current and future. As, as Denny mentioned, there was a lot of um, prognosticators that said that doctors would be gone by now by you know, the fact that the genome had been uh, discovered. But <laughs> Okay, I'm Ron Turcott. I'm the jockey from one of the greatest races ever run, the Belmont. Does anybody know what the Belmont was? So, first of all, let me tell you about Secretariat. This horse was quite amazing. I think it was mid-70s. There hadn't been a Triple Crown winner in 25 years. And the reason that you don't win a race, the Triple Crown, is because the first two races are sprint races, but the third race is a marathon race. It's much longer. And as a result, the same horse can't both sprint and also run a long race, and so you rarely ever had a Triple Crown winner. Well, Secretariat ran the first race, which was the sprint race, 
and he had a world record time at the Kentucky Derby. Unbelievable, he broke the record by like four or five seconds, just broke it completely. He then ran, which the Preakness is coming up, I think this weekend, a couple weekends later he ran the Preakness, another sprint race, he once again had a world record. Still to this day, no, one, no horse has come close to breaking these records. So now they knew that this horse was destined to not win the marathon, because no horse could ever win the marathon, after the Belmont was the marathon, which comes up in, I think, three weeks. Well, not only did he win the Belmont, but he did it in a world record pace. He got out to the front at the beginning, and he just ran like crazy. And every, every point, they compared it to the previous two races, and he was breaking the records of the sprint race. And he, in his last furlong was actually the fastest pace ever run by a horse, which was at the end of the race, after he had kind of, everyone thought he would burn himself out. Then the horse went on and ran a whole other lap. <laughs> and the lap that it ran after that was still at a world record pace. This horse was absolutely remarkable. And what they found in the end, it was, it was the only non-human ever made man of the year. So we actually use these movies to kind of create some themes and try to really fire ourselves up. And what we found was is that 2.5 times the heart is what that, the, high, the size of the secretary's heart was when he finally died. This horse had heart. We know you guys wouldn't be sitting here if you didn't have phenomenal heart. To go through what you go through day in and day out, to achieve the greatness that you're capable of individually and collectively would not happen if you didn't have big heart.